Today I wanted to show you how to make burp cloths. They are super practical, can be really, really cute, and I often make them in a set of different items. So the nice little dribble bib, the burp cloth, and the tag blanket. And it's nice because you can coordinate these with the rest of your gift that you're giving or with the decor in the baby's room or with mom's preferences. It's really just a very thoughtful gift and it's quite practical. So I line my birth burp cloths with a fleece. You can line them with terry cloth if you want to. I like the fleece. It's a little thinner, soft, and it's quite absorbent as well. So I can make one of these birth cloths for very, very little. I source my fabrics from all sorts of different places. Sometimes I find fleece blankets at Walmart or at other places that I can line them with. I have used sheets, I've used um, tablecloths, depending on the fabric. I've also used pillowcases and men's dress shirts are great for this. So anything you find on sale that you are going to get quite a bit of material out of is perfect. You can upcycle things if you want to. There are so many different ways to make these on a budget and they're super heartfelt. They're really unique. No, nobody's going to have the exact same one, especially if you are finding fabric from not common sources. You're never going to have the same one. So place your pattern piece along the fold with the grain line going this way and then cut it out and do the same with your fleece fabric. Lay it on the fold and cut it out. Now we have both your pieces. Lay your fabric pieces right side together. Now fleece is a little tricky, but there is a right and a wrong side to fleece. Okay. So now you can pin all of your edges all the way around. And then we will head to the sewing machine, starting here, going all the way around. like this, and then back to about here. We want to leave a bit open here so that you can flip it right side out. Okay, so like I said, we're going to start, I usually put the fleece side down. We're going to start sewing, so this is the top part of our burp cloth. I'm going to start sewing about here, and we'll go all the way around. We're going to do the curves, and I'll walk you through the curve. So again, I'm lining up my seam allowance and I have my machine set to my, I have my stitch length set to 2.5, which is where I normally leave it. So when you get close to the corner, make sure that your needle is down lift up your pressure foot, turn it slightly halfway, turn it halfway and then put your pressure foot back down. Do one stitch. I usually just move my needle manually and now lift it back up and turn it the whole way so that you are sewing on your line again. Now, Notice that my fleece isn't 100% lined up. That's going to happen a lot with those kind of things. With fleece, it happens with me and anyone else. So it is okay if it's a little over. Just make sure that you're sewing on this seam allowance that is for the fabric that you're using, for the top fabric you're using. So place it back down. And 
again, we're going to get up to the corner. We're going to turn it halfway, do one little stitch, lift it up, and now we are going around some curves. So that is a little bit trickier. What I suggest, especially at the beginning, is just go slow. Do a nice slow stitch, and then as you're going around the curves, try to keep. Don't pull your fabric or anything, just hold it a little bit in place and guide it. And when you get to a sharper curve, so this curve is a little bit sharper, I'll put my needle down and lift it and turn it a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing, lift it and turn it a little bit. And I'll continue doing that until I get past this, the bigger or the tighter corner. And back up to where I'll have my seam allowance there. And we will come back and we'll turn this right side out and I'll show you how to cut the curves and corners so that they're going to turn properly. So we've sewn all our seams all the way around, leaving our opening at the top. So before we do our opening, we are going to go and cut down each of our corners so that it's easier, especially with the fleece. We want to make sure that it's as easy as possible. You might also want to cut just a little bit around it so that it's not super bulky. So do that for all four corners. And then coming over to the curve, I do have a tutorial on how to do curves, but with this curve, we're going to cut some lines here all the way around, almost to the seam. Now don't go through the seam or else you're going to end up with a hole. But all the way around. So you can be careful with this, but you do want it fairly close. Now again, you can also trim this down a little bit if you want. And then that will take away some of the bulk. So now let's turn this right side out. Okay, so now find your hole. You tend to do this all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to pull, I'm going to push my corner up for each one. Again, push my corner up and then just continue bringing it out. You are going to make sure that each of your corners are pushed out. If you need to push out, push them out a little bit more. You can use the point of a scissor. You can use a little dowel or what I like to do. So I just grab it from the outside and pull with my pin up so it's going to make a nice sharp curve or sharp corner so the corners on these do not have to be perfect but you do want them to be fairly uniform throughout your project now lay this out now i'm going to go and press this what i want to make sure that i'm doing is pressing it right here as well to make sure that I have nice space ready and then I will pin this because we were go we are going to go over it and top stitch and when we top stitch we are going to close this hole as well as part of that so go ahead and press this and then I will meet you at the sewing machine so that we can start our top stitch Okay, so now I have pressed it, making sure that the corners have been pulled out, 
and I'm going to go ahead and pin it all the way around. Now I still do this step. I don't use a lot of pins anymore, but I still do this step because I don't want it to roll or anything or look. I want it to look as professional as possible. So I use pins to make sure it doesn't roll when I'm top stitching, especially since I have two layers and the fleece layer is a little bit more, a little bit stretchy. It's a different material than, it's a different material than the broadcloth is on the top. So make sure you pin all the way around and then we will go to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch this all the way around, making very certain that we are top stitching really carefully along this opening. I've lined up my fabric to the edge of my pressure foot and this is going to give me a quarter of an inch, which is what I want to do for a top stitch. Again, when I get to the corner, I'm going to lift it, turn it halfway, do one stitch, go all the way around. Nice and slow around the curve. Just nice and slow, keeping your seam alone the whole way. Just really nice and slow. Just guide it with your hands. Don't pull it or anything like that. Just guide it. And again, if you need to, you can stop it with the needle down, turn it a little bit, do a couple stitches, stop it with the needle down, and turn it a little bit. I didn't find that I need to do that too often with this project. So when you get to the edge of the adjoining seam, go back two stitches and forward to tie it off, and then lift it up. Pull off your needle and pull it out. So now that you've sewn all the way around, it is ready to use. I'm going to make several different ones of these in coordinating colors like this green, this green, as well as this blue. And I'm going to make a full baby set and a baby basket, so stay tuned for that tutorial as well. As always, I love to see your projects, so please send me pictures of the burr cloth or anything else that you have made. Post them on my Facebook page. Send me questions or suggestions for new videos. I love to make tutorials for you guys, so let me know what you want to see.